just about to head into Charles Towers. We're just coming up to the Burlington River, but we'll drive in there and check it out. Um, we're actually here to do a bit of an interview on the gentleman that owns the local drive-in, as well as drive-in out here at Charles Towers. And um, yeah, as we come across the Burlington, we've got people camping, playing in the river. Uh, so yeah, we'll get down there. Back to Dusty Boots Outdoors. Today we're in Charters Towers at Tours Drive-In with the owner Steve. Steve, mate, how long have you been here for? 32 years. 32 years. Driving. Yeah. And mate, whatever made you go and buy a drive-in? Still trying to figure that one out. Um, oh, it was just something I, I when I was young. I went to a, a drive-in theatre in Bowen when I was eight. Saw how a, a little light was coming out of the hole in the wall, going across all these cars and onto this big, big screen. And I went to the local picture theatre there too, and there's a little hole coming out of the back wall of light, and it's lighting up this enormous screen. And I just had to find out how it worked. Got in, asked for permission to go into the projection room, instantly hooked, and the rest is history. I went down the theatre. Yeah. And how long after that were you actually working in movies? Oh, pretty much within 12 months I was working at the Picture Theatre at the age of uh, eight and a half going on nine. Wow, yeah. And I was allowed to do the slides, it was all carbon arc then, and Ben DeLuca and Phil DeLuca, the owners, still there running the theatre, still going. And um, they would, Benny trained me up, showed me how to feed carbon and change slides and lace projectors and do changeovers and make up film. And, yeah, this is history. And you've been involved in drive-ins and movie theatres basically? Yeah, I've since. been in, yeah, I worked for Greater Union Cinemas as a projectionist. The Albert, the Forum and George in Sydney, they're all gone. The Capera Drive-in, they're all gone now. But uh, by the time I was 19, I had an opportunity to buy my own drive-in. My wife, to be at the time, Deb, uh, decided to come along for the ride. She was 18 and on the 23rd of um, April, 1990, uh, we bought the Tours Drive in off uh, the Blackburn family, yeah. who are still considered family to us too, because we knew them when I was in boarding school here. Yeah, so at, at 19 and your wife 18, oh, no. he's, got, he's gone out, got the loan or whatever. Two loans, because we're only out of school, we had to borrow a deposit yeah. to get the, the rest of the loan from the bank. So we had two loans on the go, and interest was very high under at that yeah, time, yeah. 21.9%. So obviously didn't own a house yet. Oh no, no, the only thing we had was a car. We yeah. owned our car. And just gone gone yeah. in deep, as hard as you could. Yep. Yeah. It would have been quite a scary time. It was a hell of a scary time. We, we actually camped on the floor in the storeroom and we washed our clothes in the sink because we couldn't afford a washing machine um, or a bed at the time. Yeah, we had a mattress yeah. that, that our cook who was working for us lent us. <laughs> Roy, Roy West. It was yeah, it was like heaven when we got that mattress to sleep on. Before that, we were sleeping on just a lot of dunas and blankets on the concrete floor because we just had no money. We'd bought this drive-in and the bank repayments were so high we had no money. Did the drive-in come with a house on the property? No, no? no it came as just the drive-in building and the screen and that was it. Yeah. There was nothing here. Right, eh? We had to build everything that you see here today has been built up over the years. And when was this first open? Uh, it was open on St Patrick's Day in 1966. Wow. It was built on a bet that yeah. Jack Felt had with fellow exhibitors that he couldn't build a drive-in. So he, Jack Felt being a great man, he did. Everything was handmade, the speaker posts were all moulded and poured handmade, the screen was all made a railway line and handmade and built. Yep, and he did it and he built it for £22,000 in 1965 and then he opened it in 1966 when the country changed to decimal. Yeah, right huh? And the hamburger was 10 cents. Right, very nice. And still doing hamburgers here tonight? Nothing's changed. The whole place runs exactly the way it ran since it opened in 66. The only difference is the movies are more modern. The place is you know, very well maintained. We hope all the speakers are going. We have FM, digital sound now and everything else, but the actual theatre is still in its original 
yeah. state. And that's well, we've improved it with projection and the cafe and that, but yeah. the building and everything is still the same. And that is something like quite important to you to try and keep to its heritage. Yeah, I've kept it to its original look. Yeah. You know, we could cut the monorail off the top of the drive-in screen if we wanted to because it's no longer used, but instead we did it all up and painted it and fixed it all and we leave it there because that's like the original letters that were cut out before the neon signs were made. They were yeah. cut out by Harry Buckler, who was the manager of it, and helped Jack Felt build it. Yeah. And, see, and we got to know Harry quite well for 20 odd years before he passed away. And that's his, he did those letters and we've got them all up there on display. We've tried to keep the whole heritage look, everything, you know, in its original form. Yeah. How but maintained, of course. How many vehicles can you actually put in it? It holds with the twin it'll hold about 200 and holds about 250 cars yeah very nice which is enough for the size of this turn you very rarely will ever fill it and i remember coming as a kid like for the driving with my mum and dad dad had an old xc panel van we used to put the mattress in the back and yeah, we'd yeah. all be sitting there you know windows down i remember if there wasn't many people in the driving you know i'd get out and turn all the speakers on around us so oh yeah the the so you started that yeah. <laughs> that still goes on <laughs> Kids are amazed that sound comes out of the ground out of a post. It yeah. sits out in the ground, there's sound coming in. They don't, they don't understand there was a lot of money in wiring under the ground. I remember the transformation of, um, there was like a clip that would go yeah, on the aerial. Yeah, Well, Dad's radio would never work properly, so we'd have to drive around until we found somewhere where we had a speaker that we could clip yeah, on there still. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. We used to go to the drive with my father, he was an electrician. He used to have an old bongo van. We'd park it ass about, we'd all be sitting on mattresses on top of cables and tools and yeah. things like that. Yeah, straight in on top of the work car. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, very nice. Often in his work clothes still. And I've heard a little story that um, you actually had a couple of um, car clubs or whatever with their panel vans come out and do a bit of a display. Yeah, we get the um, early Holden club in Townsville. They come out every now and then and have a night out. And there was some panel vans here recently. A year or two ago, there was the Van Nationals, I think. The Van Nationals. They had a nice time too. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see those people, those enthusiasts that are still around that are you know, keeping that tradition going and drive-in theatres and, and those sort of cars, the Sandmans, the Panel Vans, the Holders, the Ute, they all are, are part and parcel of the drive-in theatre mix. That's it. Best, mo best invention really, isn't it? The motor car and the yeah. motion picture. 100%. And this is where it comes together. Well, mate, I'm very glad that you are still basically running this and you know you definitely there's a lot of passion there in it um, that we can see and for my wife and kids they've never been to a drive-in before in their well, life. Well that's so. what gives me that's the only reason yeah. I keep it. Yep. I keep it for the next generation to enjoy um, because that's what gives me the thrill is when you see mum and dads who have been to a drive-in and can remember them from the 80s and 90s. When the families come with their kids, that's what gives us the hype. That's why I keep it. I don't need, my wife and I don't need to keep the drive-in. No. We, we don't need it. We have other interests. But we keep it because of that fact. And we keep it for the town. Definitely. Because the tours drive-in is good for Charters Towns. Mate, 100%. It's their biggest attraction. Look, we've just driven today, you know, five, six hundred k's, mm. and I've driven through Charters Towers probably four or five times in my life. Never stopped. We've just always passed through, got some... Now the tour's driving, you've yeah. found out about it. It's a blast from your past, because you remember going to drive. Yep. And now it's made you come here and stay the night. That's it. And drop some money in our town. That's exactly right. Well, that's you know? why Charters Towers, the tour's driving, is good for Charters Towers. Yeah, 100%. You know, we'll end up spending the weekend here, or you know, spend two nights, go and look around, explore the town instead of just driving straight through. So well, that's it's a great that's place. music to my ears, yeah. and I'm sure all of our locals would love hearing that. Definitely, and you know, any of our listeners, any people that are out there watching our channel, guys, please come support these local towns. Check us out, and um, Steve, thank you very much for your time. Um, we'll definitely have a look around tonight and come and try and catch oh, up. Oh, well, I'll see you at the drive-in. We'll be here tonight, okay. mate. No the kids are quite quite keen to get up to the candy bar and see what we can get but um yeah thanks very much for your time thank you thanks no. for calling in cheers guys guys charters towers is famous for its gold heritage uh, back in the day it was a very big gold mining town there's a lot of um relics and bits and pieces on display for you to go and see you can still go gold fossicking that sort of stuff um they have haunted house tours or haunted tours you can go on uh there's also on your way up to the lookout up to the world they call it 
There's a lot of uh, World War II stuff and information along the way. It's all interactive. You can download an app onto your phone, basically point at it and tell you the story of the old times and basically what people experienced through them times living in Chartist Towers and getting through World War II. They've got all the old bunkers and stuff in the mountains where you can actually go and check them out. Um, they tell you, you know, don't go inside, that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's quite interesting, good place to check out and you can see the whole town from up there. Basically just having a beer today with Michael Fletcher, uh, owner of the Aussie Outback Oasis, Big Four Caravan Park here in Charters Towers. Hey, it's a lovely spot you got here. What can you tell us about it? Ah, thanks. Yeah, we've been here for about three years. Uh, we moved up here from Sydney and we thought, you know, it's a little outback town, 10,000 people, and it reminds of, of us of, you know, years ago when I was growing up. We thought, let's give it a go. It was a bit of a, you know, not a rundown park, but it was a bit of a tired park before we came up here. We thought there's some potential. Um, it's very seasonal, so we thought we'd only really have to work hard for a few months of the year as yep. opposed to the 12 months of the year. Um, yeah, and, uh, and we like the country people. We like to deal with the country people. We were fortunate to travel for a few years before coming here, and we realised the group of people that we do like to, you know, work with. And, yeah, so we came up here and bought the caravan park and, yeah, been up here for three did, years. Did you find the park on your travels, mate, or were you actually looking for a business and mm, found it? Or? Nah, just look for something different, yeah, yep. look for a business, and this was here, and, yeah, we came up and bought it. The day we saw it, we bought it. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And mate, how much area have you got here? How big is this place? Yeah, so it's on 10 acres. Yeah. Um, we have 20 cabins, 66 powered sites and 30 unpowered sites. Wow, yeah, it's quite a big place. Yeah, yeah, okay. lots, of, you know, lots of grass. That's what lots people like to see. Definitely, lots mate. Of grass. Lots of grass, lots of kids running around. Yeah. Mate, and um, I see you've got two big pools there, absolutely beautiful waterfalls and stuff in them. The gardens are kept really nice. You know, um, yeah, what other bits and pieces have you got here for the kids? Yeah, so... Um, we've got the, the jump, the, the playground on the other side of the, um, the pools there, and we've got the uh, big crosswork, the big uh, noughts and crosses, the big uh, connect foreboard, and we've got a jumping pillow over the back here with a tyre maze and a rock climbing wall. Yep, the little girl was hitting a rock, uh, rock climbing wall before, yeah, she was yeah, loving that. Yeah, it's a bouldering wall actually. The idea, most people just climb up it, but the idea is to go across it. Oh, right, eh? yeah. I'll have to get her back yeah. out there for another lap. <laughs> oh, very nice. And hey, mate, um, where do you sit? Look, have you got this business to where you want to be or are you still, you know, trying to move towards something? Is this like a, a lifetime thing you're going to be doing or? No, nah, we've sort of got it. So we bought it just a little tired. It was not much, you know, there was very little grass, little ma uh, garden maintenance. So I thought, you know, let's get in here. We had a five year plan. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah, and we're at three years now. So we've probably got 12 months to go and then we're going to look at selling and um, sort of moving on. And we've, we've increased the occupancy rate, which was great. Yep. Um, we've got the park back to where it used to once be, um, so yeah, yeah. We're doing something different. Oh, very nice. Hey mate, earlier you were saying like you've got a school very close by, you get a lot of the families and stuff actually come to see when they're coming to visit their kids at the boarding school? Yeah, so there's three boarding schools in Charters Towers. Yeah. Um, I think three of the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere, I, I believe. There's probably seven, uh, 250, 500, maybe 700 boarders yep. out of the three schools and they come from you know, from Northern Territory that we're aware of probably further and right down to Brisbane and, and um, some of the islands. And yeah, we get a lot of um, the parents when they come up and visit the kids through the term, they stay here and bring the kids out of school and come here. Or when they come on pickup time, because they're traveling so far, they stay the night before they pick the kids up. And then they normally stay on the night of drop off. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of these kids are off, it's like surrounding properties, I suppose, from a very long way away. But a lot of these are, I suppose, kids off cattle farms and farms, that sort of yeah. stuff. Yep, they've yep. been coming here for quite, well, for, for some of them for many years since they started boarding and they can start boarding from year six. So obviously the, the, the later in high school, the, the more times they've been here. Yep. Um, and then we get the distant ed kids, that they're one of our favorites. They come in off all the stations about five times of the year. Yeah, and these are all kids doing school by the air. Yeah, they all do yep. school of the air, which is not by the air anymore. It's on the computer, on Skyping. Oh, yep, yep. Um, but they come in, they're required to come in about four or five times a year to do mini school, we call it and the school of the air is in town. So they um, yeah, all form here, and they, Monday to Friday, and then Friday they all pack up and leave. And yep. yeah, and we normally get about 30 kids, yep. um, and they look forward to coming here. This is their holiday. What are the sort of activities you just get up to? Yeah, so we try, and, we try and make it entertaining for the kids. We feel that they don't, although they've got, and they believe they've got a lot on the stations that they have, but I think they miss out on a lot of what the city kids have got. So we try and provide them 
that sort of thing. So we, yeah, we have the, um, we get the gel guns out and we do shooting down the back of the caravan park where we set some targets up or we might do a, um, like a spotlight or a hunting at night time or we have a disco at night time with the kids or we have a parties in our camp kitchen often with the kids and every afternoon we spend it in the, af uh, in the pool and I get in there and we play the water games in the pool and we provide them afternoon tea and we just provide them that sort of entertainment that they certainly don't get at home yeah. and um, and they it might be the only time they see their friends they see them on Skype yeah. but they don't see them Isn't otherwise that physical interaction that's right yeah. and some of the kids that we've had here and we've had last time they're not even they're not really sure of who the kid is until they see them at the caravan park yeah. they hear them at school yeah. because they can't actually see them on the computer they can only hear the teacher talk oh, to them yeah, yeah. you only get to see one kid at a time so when they get here they get excited to see little johnny and they didn't realize johnny looked who little johnny was yeah yeah matching yeah, the horse match to what them. they had yep. in the head yep, yep. yeah oh, very nice and mate with that you're talking about a lot of mums that come like dad's dad's working or you know they can't just all up and leave the property so mum will come by herself or that might be towing the van but you offer sort of a bit of a point of a point of difference helping them unhitch set themselves up yeah you know yep so when we came here we had it that they used to stay in a lot of cabins and very few vans and then when talking to them we realized that lots of them have got vans but they didn't use them because they were they, they felt they were concerned about the setting up and the pack up when they got here so in order to grow and get more mums here we needed to get them out of cabins so we can put those that don't have vans into cabins yep. and the ones that have vans we need to get them out of the cabins and into the van so yeah i take it upon we set all the mums up when they turn up although they're all capable they're yep. all great drivers i was gonna say there's a few dads that need a hand too oh that's <laughs> right yeah. so the and the mums can do it all with the children but it just again it makes it that much easier on the mums yep. and they've got that um that reassurance on more so on pack up that they've hitched up correctly yep. that the safety changer on the lights are working yep. so the awnings are all in everything's packed up so yeah we make a point that every mum that comes through we set the van up yep. and i'll make sure that we're here to pack it up beautiful and mate i've noticed a few people with their dogs and stuff getting around um, obviously dog friendly park yeah we're, we're extremely dog friendly we've got a couple of dogs ourselves so we like to run them around the park, they like to run around the park. So yeah. often, when it's quiet like it is now, you might only have 10 or 15 vans in. We, um, yeah, we're, we're more than well to take other dogs for a run, you know, yeah. and, and we have a run around the park and we think that, sure, that they should be on lead 90% of the times, but you know, when there's control and there's not many people around, we certainly don't have any problems with them off the lead and as long as we pick up after them. Yeah, and some of your cabins, mate, like even for some people that have their little lap dogs and stuff like that, like to sleep with them sort of thing you don't mind some of them in your cabins yeah so all, we're dog friendly in our cabins as well and they're they're not just allowed on the balcony they can actually stay in the cabin yep yeah we thought that that was a market that certainly missed because we've traveled with two dogs and we found it extremely hard yep. to travel with dogs without a van when you need to stay in accommodation we thought that that there's definitely a market and yep. you know we've hit it it's certainly we would have uh, you know, probably almost 25% of our cabins every day have got dogs in them. I think word travels very fast, very quickly, and people see it, and, and the dogs are like pe people's kids these days, That's you know? Right. And, and as much as people want to find something for kids to do, people also want to find something where they can relax with their dog yep. and not be hindered by, you know, small sites where they've got to have the dog tied up all the time. Although, we, you know, we don't, they, we don't encourage them to be wandering around the park by all means. Yep. You know, they've got to be on the lead, but we certainly provide a few acres down the back of a in our unpowered camping where they can be off the lead yeah, and run and throw the tennis ball yeah throw the tennis and the people love it yeah no, it's very nice and even got a couple of nice big barra up here at the kiosk <laughs> yeah we've got uh two big barra over the meter yep um two big barra and one smaller barra and then just a couple of little sleepy cod and some um turtles and red claw uh, very nice we'll be up tomorrow afternoon to check out that feeding <laughs> on them yeah my kids were quite interested in them uh, <laughs> well my whole idea of my trip we're heading to the territory go and catch a barra with the kids and then, Beautiful. yeah, when I get to see him swimming around there, it's pretty cool. And very, very well presented park you've got here, mate. The amenities, all that sort of stuff, 100%, big thumbs up. Um, I'd like to thank you for having us here. Right. Thank and, you. Um, mate, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, mate. It's a lovely spot. Guys, anyone watching, who's a passing through Charters Towers, um, Mixed Caravan Park is probably five minutes from the tours drive-in. It's very close, very accessible. Mate, I can't, can't rate it enough. I've driven past here probably five times before and never pulled up, but, um, Guys, take your time when you're traveling, have a look around, because yeah, some of the best things are straight under your nose and you just keep driving past them. But yeah, till next week, guys. Cheers.